This is the preamble for a consensual recording at the police station with Chris Watts. He created a bond with Chris very quickly that he knew Chris would not want to disappoint him in any way. What do you think happened? At first, I really thought maybe she was just at somebody's house, just yeah. decompressing, exploring our team. Yeah. We were getting flooded with tips of sightings of Shannon and the girls. And so we were bringing those into Chris and saying, hey, does this look like your wife and your children? Yeah. Does that look right? No, that's great. Does that look like your wife? Hair is too long? Yeah. Okay. We're trying, buddy. Sure. We are trying. So I do feel like he felt like he was part of our team. Was that a mind game? I'm not going to talk about that. <laughs> I need to ask you about um, your marriage and uh, infidelity. I have never cheated on my wife. Okay. And I. Fully suspect she has never done that to me. Oh, okay. The interview was by and large a lie from start to finish. I fully expect if we ever thought about straying another way, mm -hmm. that we would tell each other before it happened. I think that sounds ridiculous. And so our prosecutorial law enforcement wheels are starting to spin and think, we probably have the right guy. Now, how do we start poking holes in some of the things that are coming out of his mouth? What do I do? to help you walk out of this room and not look like the person who's responsible. You have to trust me that when I tell you that these two beautiful girls right here, I did nothing to them and to my beautiful wife, I did nothing to her. I can tell that there's just something you're not telling me. I don't even know if I should say this, but... <laughs> Um, Chris, while he was talking to Special Agent Coder, um, made a lot of uh, movements towards his neck area. Special Agent Coder actually came out of the room and he said uh, he may have strangled her. You know that we have to get to the bottom of this. Would you take a polygraph? Sure. They had made arrangements for him to come back the next morning and submit to a polygraphic exam. But we didn't know if that was going to happen. Go to your friend's house, get a good night's sleep. It would be very reasonable for him to conclude that he was a suspect. After that, can you just come straight here? Yeah. I conduct all my polygraphs the same. I'm very bubbly. It's not gonna buzz you or anything. <laughs> I've never, never done this before. I find it very easy to maintain rapport with someone. I think that's totally awesome that you're here today. I mean, I commend you. We do this in all of our missing person cases, so don't think that we're just singling you out. I need Chris to know that I was his friend, I was there to listen, and I was there to hear his story. You guys went to North Carolina. He met her there as a part of it. Is that right? Yeah, like she had a couple of things. Wednesday, we stopped hearing from him, so we knew that he was in interrogation. Yeah. I just make sure you don't move, okay? Okay. So right before the polygraph, I tell Chris. Right now, there's only one person in this room that knows what the truth is. And in about five minutes, there's going to be two of us. So that's the coolest part. We call it snapping a knot in their ass, because <laughs> that's what we do right before the polygraph, because we want them to know it's over. Like, whatever you're saying is, you better be truthful, or we're going to find out. All right, you ready? Do it. OK, face down. Do you know where Shanann is now? No. Did you physically cause Shanann's disappearance? No. Are you lying about the last time you saw Shanann? No. The type of testing format that I used, uh, we would consider someone to be deceptive if they were a negative four and below. Chris Watch scored negative 18. We'll be right back. Great. Immediately, I started thinking about how are we going to get him to confess to this? Because at that point, I knew he had done it. 